Inside the Green Room, Green Room with Danny Green. It's podcast. Here is Danny Green on Simmons' relationship with his teammates and his return to Philly. Interesting dynamic yes. of how things <laughs> went down. Interesting dynamic of who went with him. I don't know. I haven't got a chance to talk to those guys yet, but I know they weren't on the most of cordial terms when he was in Philly with Drum and Seth. Um, so I wonder how that relationship is now. I got a chance to talk to them. Now, will we shake hands to start? Probably not. First, I'd be highly sh- surprised if he even plays in that game. I don't know where his health is mentally, physically, and I don't. we all know that he does not like to play in Philly. But say that does happen, I see it as being a very hectic, playoff-like atmosphere environment to where it may be very rough for him. Mm-hmm-hmm. Straight talk, okay. wireless, no contract, no compromise. Jay? So, I, first off, Danny Green is really smart. I love the insight that he gave us about the relationship with Seth Curry and Andre Drummond, how that's been paired is now something that we can pay attention to as it relates to Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons better p- play his ass on March 10th. He's scheduled to come back March 8th, all right? And let me tell you why he should play March 10th, Key. So if there is an environment that hasn't been conducive to you mentally being the best version of yourself, right, that environment circulates around individuals. We know that, right? If we remove you from that environment and now you're with a new team, you got what you wanted, you got, you got a new situation, you've been with this new situation for more than a month, you've been training, you've been getting mentally ready. If there's one team out of all teams that you should be ready to play against, even if it is in Philly, it should be the team that you felt held you back with your new team. like in, Especially if your new team is a squad. A squad. Especially with your new team if Kevin Durant is back and Kyrie Irving can play in the road in Philly and you can, shut, you can go against a James Harden. Like These are the mental pieces that you need to start attacking in order for you to achieve the ultimate level of yourself, which is to become an NBA champion with your new squad. That, by the way, if Kyrie Irving is able to come back when the, when the vaccine mandate is retracted for indoor playing facilities, they will be the favorite to win the whole thing. And that will be the matchup, and that will be the team you will need to go through, Key, in order to win an NBA or Eastern Conference final or NBA championship. Yeah, and, and, and Danny Green alluded to the environment of playoff atmosphere type, and you are 100% correct. He needs to play, and he should play, and I believe he will play. I understand that Philadelphia fans feel a certain way about Ben Simmons based on the way he exited, but he was in Philadelphia for his entire career up until now. At the end of a year ago, when he didn't hit the shots and do all of those things, and he and then all of a sudden Doc Rivers said that he didn't know if, in fact, Ben Simmons was the point guard that could lead a team to a championship. Mm. That was at the end of the year. He hadn't played in Philly since it became a hostile environment. Okay, The only thing he could do is read the newspapers, listen to sports talk radio, watch the news, look at the social media. That's the only thing. He hasn't been in that building to really feel the heat on the Philadelphia fan base on him in a game. So, yes, you do that. You go, you play, and you laugh at it. You don't allow it to affect you. Even if you have a bad game, you smile. You make them so upset at you that you just walk off the court whether you win or lose or anything. That's what you do. You play mental games back with them. No, what, though? And, and Ben Simmons, it's not just that he was missing shots. He wouldn't take shots, and then the feeling was shots. he wouldn't even be aggressive going to the rinks. He didn't want to get to the free throw line, right? But listen, our very own Alan Yates is a Philly sports fan. Hey, Yates, you think, you think uh, Ben Simmons is showing up for that game? I mean, he's going to be there, but I don't got him down for playing. I just think it's too close See. To, for him to Philly play. Philly fans. Well, why, well, why See, he, why this not? is why. This is why, hold, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yates. Can you understand that if he doesn't play in that game, he will let every Philadelphia 76er fan know that they have won? I don't know exactly. Won. But but he's not I don't I don't got him down for playing, Jay. I just don't think as someone who has mental health issues or or allegedly, he I think it's too close of a turnaround for him to get ramped up to play and then come in and face the He hasn't one. played in 270 let me, let me tell days. You what it is. Jay, Jay, hold on. Let me tell you what it is. See, Yates is a Philly fan, right? Philly fans believe that Simmons don't want it with them. And and let me tell you why I believe Philly fans are so upset with Ben Simmons. They took care of this dude. They have a bad reputation. Oh, they get on guys, da-da-da. They 
took care of Simmons when the rest of the world's like, he won't even shoot. Philly fans were telling you how great he was. He could be an MVP. Da, da, da. So when he finally stopped shooting, stopped driving because he didn't want to go to the free throw line, missed every shot that he yeah. did take, and, and choked it away. And when he finally did all that and then had the nerve to turn around and say, I don't feel good here and wouldn't even show up. The fans are like, yo, we defended you against all this for years now, and this is how you do us? Philly fans like Yates think that Simmons doesn't want it with them I get it. so he won't suit up. Yeah, I get no, that, And, and I get that may be the case. He probably, at that time, though, imagine being in an environment, with a, a, a situation that you don't want to be in. When you get removed from that situation, you feel a whole lot better. You feel different, regardless if you got to go visit that place again at some point in time in your career. When you are removed from an environment that one would deem toxic, that you don't like, you go away, you, you're like, okay, I'm, my head is clear now. I'm thinking way different. I got a different mindset. I got teammates now in a, in a Kyrie Irving along with a KD who can talk to me different than some dude looking at me. With, with with bifocals on on the sideline, talking crazy. I don't have to deal with that. I, like, seriously. Yeah, you, know, no, that, that, saying, you, you think. I'm just trying to tell y'all, if he does not play on March 10th. Yeah, he should play. The next day, Oof. media but he should is play, though. have a frenzy with him. And it, it, sets, it sets the wrong tone for him in New York. Here's what's nuts. If but the, what if, if he, that whole team is healthy? What if they it, see each man, other again that. in the playoffs? That's what I'm saying, Keith. He's got to play. A, that's why he has to play. System. That's why you have to play in this one now. You have to start yeah. working on this. Exactly. I mean, we're only a month and a half, two months away from the playoffs. <laughs> it's coming right. It's up. right there. You got to start doing it now. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.